Yo, what's up, guys? This is John coming at you from Cowheeler Motors, and today we are gonna do a quick uh, rundown slash kind of commentary photo review of what seems to be the newest thing from Electric Motion, the Escape X. Now let's get into it. <music> Alright, thank you guys once again for checking out my channel. Now, uh, appreciate you guys, all you guys for subscribing and going to Electric Trail Riders slash Call Wheeler Motors on YouTube. Uh, hit the subscribe button, please. Hit the notification button as well to get notified. We do have uh, videos from the last Tennessee Knockout All Electric Race held on by yours truly himself, uh, Tucker Nearly from Electric Cycle Rider. But check out. Um, all the videos we have on electric motions and we also have a playlist on how to do a breakdown and repair of the bike and some troubleshooting tips these are very important when you're out there in the trail and you may have an issue and you might have seen it on a video so good point of reference back to the point at hand this is what we're all here for this is the escape x now off the bat you can see this bike is pretty amazing um they've taken the escape which we know and love as a trials based uh bike with a seat longer range blah 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 we all know that uh, but now they've tailored it to more of a enduro slash uh heavy duty racing bike and the race that they set this up for initially was for e-explorer now this is a um this is a race it's a it's a dual kind of race and it's interesting because it's set up in a way that you go head to head, but you have different courses. So let's take a moment and check this race out and you can see what they built the bike for. I think this is Robbie Madison on a Suron and this is Chris Braun uh, with the Escape X. Now check this out. And Robbie Madison is flying over there, but you see when they get into the rocks, Chris Brown is right there and the, the lines are different. This track is split into two sections where Chris Brown comes flying on that ramp. And that's basically where the, the big suspension comes in, you know, the big front forks. Now take in mind the Suron has been completely upgraded to handle all this stuff. So this is a it's a very one off bike. Chris Brown doing that big tabletop. And these guys are going fast, so Speed is a factor. This is not what the typical trials bike platform is built for. And we all know this. And anybody who's ever ridden the Escape quickly could tell you the same. But it seems that Chris Brown got the W in this video. And that's pretty awesome. So just in a whole, that's what the, the bike was designed for. For fast pace, heavy hits, quick uh, turns, and, and all that stuff. It's pretty much at speed. Anything at speed. And as you can see, this is the EM family right here from France, you know, standing behind their bikes. I guess they got some. And I will say this right now. I am disappointed because these bikes are not for in production at the moment. They made it clear. EM has made it clear that this bike is not for production and it is a one-off they built for the race. Now, I hope in the future it will be in production, but that has not been released just yet. I have tried to order some. As soon as I seen these, seen these, I ordered like five of them. I was like, I need these right now. But um, that's when they told me it's not a production model just yet. So right off the bat, you can see inverted forks. And that is a very new thing. You got a huge front caliper um, mounted back here. And these are brake techs as well. I believe they're just regular two pistons versus the four piston brake techs that you get with the trials version. Or with the trials bike that is uh, motocross style fender um, to take up the the um, the range of suspension here Michelin Nobby front and rear and this is kind of cool because 
um, you know, like I said, they're just going more to enduro. I mean, we've done this in Hawaii uh, like two years ago. You know, we put knobbies on our in our escapes uh, here. You can check this out. Yeah, like we did this a while ago, um, but we use a little different equipment. Um, we're doing a IX09W type of uh, you know setup here. And basically, yeah, we have a video of it too. So the E-Enduro mod. Yeah, we didn't mount the front fender on this guy. But, you know, it's been done. And the cool thing about what Electric Motion is doing is they're kind of promoting that, which I like. So, but this guy sitting on it too, there's a couple questions that I get from this picture, right? Number one, um, is the rear shock upgraded? Hard to tell. With, with this guy sitting on it, he's not a big dude, but with him sitting on it, the bike still seems to be somewhat level, which is which is good. I mean, they might have resprung it. Um, I don't think they changed the shock because I'm not exactly sure what you could actually fit in there and the linkage difference, um, but maybe they resprung it. Maybe they um, just set it up differently for the sag and whatnot. It's hard to tell. Uh, for me, it's hard to tell what type of fork this is obviously i think it's like a 39 millimeter still um or it could be a 43 millimeter but i i doubt it but i have not seen a brand of fork like just like this um yeah we've seen we've done some research in the past and it, it's like a no-name brand but it's it's probably a common one i just i just don't know and that rotor is huge and this is this is nice because um even with the uh upgraded fork model that uh, one of our customers did in Hawaii here, the two piston brake um, seems to be a little bit easier uh, when riding at speed. Like if you want to trim speed, it doesn't grab as hard as the trials one. I mean, obviously the trials one is not made for, you know, to decelerate you at high speeds. Of course, it's made for control, is made for precision. And if you want to like stuff your front wheel on on the top of something like on a rock you know that's exactly what it's good for right but um trimming speed this is a lot more comfortable going down hills and whatnot they got the fender mounted straight to the triple clamps and as you can see the triple clamps are beefier and then let's go into some of the other photos that we kind of broke down um to show you other things now this is what i'm talking about guys right here this is what is the difference between <clears throat> their escape x and what you might want to build now of course everybody's going to see this and they're going to want this setup right um but just taking just take into consideration there are a few structural things that electric motion did so that your bike is not exactly as structurally so structurally sound as what they built so if you're gonna do something like put bigger heavier forks on just know that it wasn't intended for it so therefore, I mean, if you do run into any issues, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's not a warranty thing. Um, just a disclaimer from us, because, you know, we want to break down this bike, but we don't want to basically just say that you can go out and do whatever you want. You know, it is different. And it, here's what the difference is. So you can see they have a brace here right under this Escape sticker. Now, this brace is for, I guess it's like a, a gusset for more structural resistance on the frame since you have a fork that seems like it's raked out more the trials one i haven't measured it um but of course i can't measure it but the trials one seems to be a little bit back like the rake on this is a little bit more forward um of course again more enduro style okay moving on these a little bit close up of these brakes again um yeah that, that thing is massive and it seems like there's a bracket here so i mean normal brake calipers mount up straight to the fork uh mounting point here but this one um i'm not even sure if that's absolutely necessary but this rotor is huge it's like i mean regular dirt bike full-size 300 cc dirt bike style rotor so it the caliper has a bracket that it's mounted to and then mounted to the fork so that's pretty interesting um if that's necessary if you, we will get that later i don't know that's that's something to look at though it's pretty cool 
see how um, we got this set up from a Spanish company and they sold us tech forks. Now these tech forks are 39 millimeter as well. It does come with formula um, front master cylinder and caliper, two piston. It also comes with a rotor, um, but this one, as you can see, is mounted straight to the fork. There's no um, bracket in between. And I'm not exactly sure what diameter rotor this is, but as you can see, it's, I mean, it is obviously smaller than the, um, the uh, EM version. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that a little bit better right there. It's just mounted straight there. It's a floating rotor as well, so that's nice. And these, these, I mean, these shocks are really good. I'm surprised. I didn't like them at first. I'll be honest. I didn't care for them. But I think I tried them when they were new and they were a little bit not broken in yet. Uh, now with some tuning for the rebound and the uh, compression on the bottom and the rebound on the top for both sides. Um, oh man, I tell you, going down hills is nice. Uh, the roots is great. Um, I think we just have to mess around with the rear shock and figure out what is the best setup for that. All right, so here's another close-up of the Escape X from Electric Motion. As you can see, we talked about this brace that they added, and you can see it's a little bit more defined in this picture. But also, not only this brace, it seems like they added another piece here. Our bikes currently don't have this, but this other piece also seems to be a steering stop, um, doubling as a steering stop, so structural as well to add more rigidity to this neck area and then a nut and bolt seems like it's been placed here to uh hit the hit the triple clamp so that the turning radius is reduced now again everybody who has an escape or a trials bike in general knows that going fast on a trials bike is sometimes sketchy af you know because um, it turns so much, and if it does turn too much, you're going straight over the bars. It wasn't designed for speed, but this, this is designed for speed, and that's why they put it there. It's all these small details. You can see a little bit more here in the close-up. Okay, so this is the best picture I could get from a, a kind of a rear angle. Um, only thing I see in this picture really is everything we've talked about. Um, I can't see the shock. It's it's under this flap, of course. You know that's that's always hidden. But it seems to me that this Michelin tire has shaved knobs, and we'll get into a little bit detailed pictures of these tires later. I have them on my screen. Um, but it seems like it's shaved, and it would have to be shaved because I use the IX09W Gekota, and that is a 110 100, um, and I had to shave a lot of the side knobs just to get it to fit. Also, as you can see, they removed the top mud guard here. So there's, when you buy the bike originally, there's a top mud guard that stops the mud from coming down and just, you know, basically resting on the chain. That is gone. Uh, if that's a good thing or a bad thing, I mean, if it's a dry day, hey, it doesn't matter, right? But when it's muddy, I mean, I've been there where the mud is just basically caking on that plastic guard. And I know uh, without it, it would get, you know, on the chain quite a bit um but this tire i believe is a 90 100 by 18 so i'm not exactly sure why i'm not exactly sure how it fits i i haven't i mean i got i gotta look at the tire a little bit more but because the knobs naturally on this michelin are a little bit shorter on the sides maybe it's a perfect fit now is the swing arm wider i don't think so i don't know for sure but i don't think so it doesn't seem to be and it doesn't seem to be any longer which i think some enduro people would like as well a longer swing arm just to make the just to make the wheelbase a little bit wider and then to give you more gap here because especially in those muddy days this gap we all know gets a little packed uh with the mud and with the circle shared swing arm you know the circle style swing arm you have very little clearance on the sides um so I will say this is actually like a barely fit kind of deal. Uh, and there again, this is our, this is how we did it, right? Nobby's in the front. I did a IX09W in the front as well as in the rear. And you can see these knobs are, are pretty, pretty sticking out, but they're shaved quite a bit. Yeah, as you can see, we shaved a lot off 
the sides just to get it to fit but i tried to keep uh the plastic mud guard on as much as possible yeah going back to this picture as well i i think it's a regular chain ring i i don't see why it would be bigger uh than the standard 57 teeth that we have um but then again i would assume they would like it to be smaller um it's not as small as the 47 tooth that used to come on the escape before um that was for definitely for higher speed you know a little bit less torque but for this kind of race i don't think you need all that torque you, i think you need the speed um, so maybe this is a smaller uh, rear sprocket, but if it is smaller, I mean, it must be smaller by very little. Right, you can see here that the chain to the cover is so close. If you went any bigger, one tooth bigger, you'd be maxing it out. And that's just inviting anything to get stuck in there, you know, a rock or something. That's just going to wreck it. So I'm, I'm assuming you want some clearance at this point here. And uh, one of the last thing that we want to point out to everyone when you when for this Escape X, they didn't feel the need to use the solid trials wheel that comes with the R and the race models. So this X has a standard uh, 18 inch uh, regular spoked wheel, not the turnbuckle style. Um, I'm sure it runs a tube. There's probably a Schrader here. And of course, you can see the rim lock here. And that would be just fine for this kind of race. You know, it's not in the woods. Um, you don't need to use a moose necessarily. But you could run a moose if you wanted to. And uh, yeah, this is just a regular standard wheel. Uh, like you get with the regular Escape, not the R model. But they've brought it, um, yeah, they brought it back for this. And this, um, is it the hub different? No. Yeah, and this hub is different too. This is probably a heavier duty hub. I believe the standard hub only comes with four bolts for the rear sprocket. Um, I could be wrong. I, I I don't think I am though. I don't think I am. I think I'm correct. Um, yeah, one, two, three, four. There's only four on the um, the old hub. I mean, sorry, not the old hub. The standard um, electric motion hub. Let's see. And yeah, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, six. So the hub has been upgraded as well. So in closing, guys, you know, like I just want to say hats off to Electric Motion. I mean, we've we've talked about this a lot. I've talked about it so much with other guys on the Electric Motion users group, you know, talking about Enduro forks and this and that. And like like you've seen, we've already done this. Um, but they've taken it uh, to the next level and, um, you know, added some bracing, you know, just for extra support. And that's good. But I'm glad to see that Electric Motion is looking at the Escape as more of an enduro bike. I mean, we all know the purists will say it's a trials bike. And yeah, yeah, it is a trials bike base. But why can't you use it for hard enduro? Here in Hawaii, we love this for hard, and hard enduro. And that's pretty much all we do, even on our... Um, I mean, <laughs> the the TKO is a hard enduro race. You know, all the places we ride in Hawaii is pretty much, you know, short hard enduro sections. I mean, we're going in the water, we're doing hill climbs, um, we're trail riding basically, you know. And the Escape is a perfect bike for tight technical enduro riding. It is the perfect, the perfect, perfect bike. Right on. So thanks again, guys. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe. And if you like the breakdown of the bike, yeah, please hit me up on our Instagram and whatnot. We are going to actually be doing um, a breakdown of some other uh, things as far as what we have uh, here in Hawaii. We have uh, this bike and we're going to do some reviews on this as well. I'm just going to talk about it basically and how I feel about the forks and how I like the forks. Um, you know, like I said, it's something that can be done, but just know that if you do do it, there are some risk involved and there are some technical things that they have taken into consideration. But um, overall, this is a good direction of uh, where we want to see EM going. And uh, we hope that they continue on that path uh, and get this bike, this bike here, out for production. Now, take care, guys. Once again, ride with Aloha. Until the next time, ahui ho.